My favorite part of an expedition is watching the scientists' faces as ROV Sebastian comes to the surface. That first excitement as they open the bio boxes to look at the samples that were collected is breathtaking. The labs are hubs of anticipation for the scientists, ROV pilots, and crew as they await to see what new discoveries the samples might bring. Pretty much on a daily basis, the labs have been changing substantially. So it's really exciting to kind of see them all come together from bare walls to scientists are going to actually be able to come in here and set up their equipment and, and do their science on a cruise. Well, if we think about uh, what we had on research vessel Falco, we had just two real labs, uh, the dry lab and the wet lab, and quite often it was extraordinarily crowded. This ship has so many more labs. Okay, so we have a total of eight state-of-the-art laboratory spaces on uh, research vessel Falcor 2. And this enormous space is our brand new main lab. We've got uh, various different refrigeration options, four degree fridges, minus 30 degree freezers, minus 80 degree freezers. Um, we've got 4K monitors in various locations. Uh, so the scientists will be able to watch uh, the data as it comes in. It's going to be a truly multidisciplinary space, whether it's chemistry, environmental DNA sequencing, all sorts of things could be going on in here. It's completely configurable. So no matter what type of science party is on board, they're going to be at home in the main lab and have space to do what they need to do. And then we have the seawater lab. the Hydro Lab, the Wet Lab, the Dirty Wet Lab, Computer Electronics Lab, our Robotics Lab. Okay, and this, you're going to go ooh, and then you're going to go ah, because, behold, there are lights. So this is the cold lab. So as far as what type of science will be achieved in these spaces, the best part is we don't really know yet. Depending on what type of scientists come out, the world is their oyster. They can do whatever they want with, with these labs, and that's how we planned it. We wanted it to be configurable for every type of scientist that could possibly come on board now and years into the future. When scientists submit proposals for research cruises, generally they have some idea of what they might find. But the whole point is to actually go out there and to see that for themselves, and then communicate what they found with the world. And so when you have a research vessel with this capacity of labs and equipment that's actually going to these remote places and they're able to do all this science real time, scientists may say like, hey, this is not what we expected to find, or this is exactly what we expected to find. We need to spend more time in this area or we need to do certain types of sampling to better understand. And so by having this facility in these places, it's able to create a more dynamic science party and dynamic crews to achieve the best science we possibly can.